The world is sinking, but Africa is rising. It's time for Africa to turn the tide of political conflict, economic uncertainty, and moral decadence. The time is now for Africa to arise and rebuild. Inspire E-Conference 2023 will give you the tools and strategies to be part of Africa's rebuild. Join us online this August from Monday the 7th to Saturday the 12th from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. East African time as we gather the brightest minds across the continent to discuss the rebuilding of Africa. Book your slot today and be part of the movement that will change Africa forever. Africa, arise and build. To invite our second speaker uh, for today, um, he's a distinguished um, serial fintech entrepreneur and a market disruptor with a global impact. So as the founder and CEO of Edom X Group, he spearheads uh, innovative ventures in the financial and technological sectors. So. Julian's remarkable journey includes founding the Mod Group, a fintech enterprise spanning across 26 countries, which was acquired by Digital One in 2018. He is recognized for his visionary leadership, winning accolades with the CNBC East Africa Entrepreneur of the Year, and featuring in the esteemed publications like Forbes Magazine and Bloomberg International. So beyond his entrepreneurial prowess, Julian is deeply committed to impactful initiatives. And as the founder and chairman of Beula City, he drives affordable housing projects in Kenya. So showcasing his dedication to community development. So Julian's strategic partnerships and relationships have paved the way for game-changing digital financial services, uh, including Faraja and Julama. He's also a, a spiritual leader, serving as the founder and senior pastor of the Purpose Center Church, emphasizing the harmonious integration of faith and business. So with a focus on innovation, leadership, and social impact, Julian Tula stands as a multifaceted force driving change in both the financial and spiritual realm. So please uh, let us welcome Julian Chula, our next speaker, who's going to take us through um, the next session for the conference on day two. Welcome, Julian Chula. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Uh, very good. Very good. God bless you and thank you for inviting me. I'm uh, en route to my house, and uh, so allow me to speak to you from where I am. But um, it's it's a joy to to be here today, and uh, thank you for inviting me. It was just beautiful to hear what Dr. Laban is doing, and uh, to to all of you, um, the entire leadership of Inspire. Thank you for the opportunity to to speak with you once again this year. Um, I think I'll just um, pray and uh, share with you a little bit, have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you all, um, a very sincere heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And um, hopefully while doing that, be able to speak through one or two um, uh, scriptures that will guide us and help us. So Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you for the entire team from Inspire. Thank you that we have gathered here from different parts of the world to hear you, to understand what you're telling us and showing us and calling us to do. I thank you, Father, that uh, faith is a doing word and anyone that does not have faith cannot please you. So have your way tonight as we have this conversation and be glorified in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, um, um, I was really praying about what to share with you all tonight. And uh, um, I think taking a cue from Dr. Laban um, and seeing what they're doing uh, with, with um, the businesses, I believe that, um, and also with the community and just transformation, there's a vein that seems to be... Um, on the heart of what I'd call most of the true ministers and um, leaders 
in the kingdom, and that doesn't necessarily mean a pastor. It means anybody that is in the kingdom, there's been a stirring, probably a disturbance or just a, an unrest in a lot of us to really seek God about what is God truly saying to us? What is really going on? Um, what is this happening about building and communities and anyone that is sensitive in the spirit knows that there's a shift that has happened in the spirit um, for this whole um, conversation that has to do with God and his people. And um, <clears throat> uh, whereas I think there was a very key and necessary focus on a particular leader in the dispensation we are still in, but just the season we are coming from, um, the, the true vein is there was a very big focus in my view of the last two, three hundred years on very transformational thinking in the gospel, all the way coming down to um, the understanding of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the understanding of who uh, God is, um, and just the whole teaching and grasping of what am I supposed to do? You have to study history. I believe scripture says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, 2 Timothy 2.15, right? So there has to be an element of study to come into total comprehension of what is God doing now? And um, God is very clear that knowledge is going to help us understand how we are going to grasp the truth because it is the truth that will set us free. And um, I started taking some time to study and just, again, I'm making sure I don't deviate from um, one, my time, and also from what Dr. Laban was um, trying to share in our hearts. So in that, in that understanding of history, there's been a gathering, a gathering globally, revivals, um, people gathering, two, 300 years of gathering, the last 100 years of very interesting gatherings. What are the gatherings for? What were these moves of God? What was this sensitivity about as we draw closer and closer and closer to um, certain timelines of God's calendar, how do we um, become like the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the seasons and therefore knew what Israel ought to do? That scripture says, if you don't understand the season, you will not know what to do. And let me tell you, and um, in all humility, the whole exercise of expending so much energy as a community, so much energy in our youth meetings, a lot of energy in our prayer meetings, and you can never uh, go wrong when you start to focus on uh, things like prayer. But the Bible does tell us that if you do not understand certain elements of knowledge, the people do perish and you can even pray amiss. If praying amiss was not possible, it would not be in the scripture. What should we be spending these two assets doing right now? What should we be spending our time and energy on right now? And I've been in the marketplace um, and I've been introduced as one who is in finance and technology, but I'm also heavily, heavily involved in real estate. I'm heavily involved in the capital markets, um, in, in investment um, uh, capital. And um, I can tell you what I'm seeing as I've traveled the world. Um, I just got back from the US, I was ministering there and also doing some work. And I can tell you there is something that is shifting heavily. God is up to something. God is always up to something, but God is up to something in our time. And so when I look at this, my prayer was in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, where Peter prays and says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So it hit me that grace and peace can be multiplied. There's a multiplier possibility for grace and peace. To do what? To understand things in our time. What should we be doing? Jesus warned us and said, um, any man that 
puts his hand on a plow and looks back is not worthy. He also said that any man who decides to build a tower must first count whether he has enough to finish. Because if that man begins and does not finish, then there will be um, satirical laughter. There will be people laughing at you because of a lack of finishing. There's a constant emphasis of Christ in finishing things that we start, especially if they're in accordance to what God wants to do in that time. What is happening now? Is church what it used to be? And listening to Dr. Laban, as I said, I'll come back there. Um, it's very clear that church is not um, just what it used to be. Jesus said, I'll build my church. So there's continuous revelation, continuous understanding. Truth is unfolding. And we must come into the place when we um, um, can understand how to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We can understand how to reference scripture for what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, so I'm very deliberate about why did God tell me to start building houses for our church members? Why did God start talking to some of my friends who have been speaking on pulpits for many years and sensitizing them about building cities? Why are we hearing Dr. Laban here talking about coming out and solving problems. This is a man that has been minister in the word of God for years. What is going on? Why are my friends in America talking about building cities? Men are getting down from traditional preaching and coming and bringing solutions to the people that God has given them. There seems to be a very interesting shaking in the traditional 400 year old um, type of ministry where there's one person speaking from a pulpit and people are listening and I'm not saying anywhere that is going anywhere anytime soon I'm just saying there's a sensitivity God seems to be putting on pastors more than ever and any shepherd who is true to this is getting sensitized to start thinking about the sheep more than ever before and that tells me there's going to be a shift in how people will expect the church to respond to situations. We've come at an age where you can actually have people who are your members um, from all over the world in ways that were not happening before. A young generation is rising up, but they're bringing some solutions that haven't been seen before. A word of relevance, but they're getting ridiculous followings, or if not even the following, they're doing things very, very differently. So. God is saying there's a knowledge I want my people to have and a spiritual and experiential knowledge of God means that we must come into this place of understanding what should we be doing so that when we say we want to now begin owning the banks and owning the industries, there's a shaking. And my heart is, you know, when I pray and when I read the word of God, I'm very, very clear that my uh, practice of how I have done ministry has to now come against the very word of God, not against, but it has to be measured against the word of God and it has to be measured to do what God has called me to do. Why are we looking at the condition of the sheep? Why are we looking at their marriages? Why are we looking deeper than ever before at the state of life they're living? Why are we looking at where they work? Why are we looking at building new ecosystems? Why is God drawing us more and more to the Jewish style of life where we can start to keep economies within um, an ecosystem and a community? Why are we beginning to talk about doing our own bread and keeping finances within, doing our own schools? Why are we, what is going on? And this is one of those things that I'm not sure can necessarily just be answered um, on a very short period of time like we have, it has to be answered through practice and through doing. Why? Because faith is not a saying word. Uh, faith is a doing word because they that come to him must believe that he's a reward of those that diligently seek him. But anybody who comes to God without faith is unable to please him because God cannot be pleased by the faithless. It is impossible to please God without faith. Impossible. Why? Because faith comes, you cannot tell me to, you can't say to me you have faith. You need to show me your faith. 
faith is more demonstrable than it is. And so I, I sense that the world has come up with some systems, but the kingdom of God is going to oppose those systems by action now. And that action includes building. Uh, it includes um, certain things that are going to become clearer and, and patterns um, uh, that God is bringing. So we're just... We've just broken ground on our first major project, 1,100 uh, units of apartments. Um, we had to break certain things and elements about that. We broke the element of expense and finance. Mortgages in Kenya go for about 18 to 22%. We completely negotiated with the banks so that our people are able to get a way to pay for these houses at just a little bit above 9%. And we built our houses to where a waiter can now own a home in the city, in the urban settings. I heard Dr. Lavan talk about the country settings. It doesn't matter where we are because if we don't come up with formulas, we are going to be kicked out of all the economic centers in Africa because every other religion has a strategy. So we must ask ourselves and come to a place where we say we are building for our communities, but our communities have to take advantage we are invading the financial system for the sake of our community. God is raising Joseph's and Esther's and Daniel's all at the same time. Deborah's are rising. Not where you have a Deborah in Judges and then you have a Joseph in uh, Exodus and uh, Genesis and then you have an Abraham coming up in a part of this is all at once all over the world god is up to something and we have to hear what he's saying and the funniest thing is that the greatest opposition of the new is always the old i didn't say old people i said the greatest opposition of the new will always be the old so those of you that are entering these careers very high levels of banking very high levels of technology so we've just you know, broken ground on these apartments. And, you know, 70% of them have sold out. Why? 1,100 units. Those are not few. We're getting ready to launch another 1,400 units um, in October. And 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 we're, we're housing people affordably. It's going to cost $150 for our studio for a person to own a home. That means generationally, a family can now decide we're putting something aside for our children. We're putting something aside for, you know, it. it I even told a, a few pastor friends, I'm so ready to step down from poop. It's not that that's everybody's call because I'm beginning to fall in love with the assignment of relevance to community. And we have to ask ourselves certain questions around who is coming up and it's not necessarily for all pastors because in the church are people that are equipped some of you are so equipped you go raise millions of dollars for um an indian project you're so equipped and skillful you go and raise and that's what god is bringing us a sensitivity to understand i am doing a new thing isaiah 43 18 to 19 why because if you don't do it as dr laban was showing you the darkest continent in the world with the highest um, GDP of saved people, the highest evangelism, the highest, um, 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 we, we, we have the highest um, GDP of um, Christians in the world, the largest congregations. Could it be that there's something now God wants us to do with the gatherings that goes beyond a two-hour Sunday service? Could it be that God wants to do something with the community? That when you look at my country, there are people who are 15,000 of them in my entire country, and they control 18% or 12% of our economy. 12% of our economy is run by a group of 15,000 people. And these people have come together, and they've run this ecosystem for 34 years in our country. and. They're consistent, they're committed, they're focused. When all of us are, uh, uh, you know, when we are reciting in church, when others are saying there's a casting down, we shall say there's a, uh, a lifting up. This community is never crying about a casting down because they have organized. And therefore, is there a responsibility as we celebrate the miraculous, as we celebrate the works of healing? Could there be a 
responsibility by God for why have I given you peace? Why have I given you rest? Why am I giving you this opportunity? There's a rising up in Africa. I'm seeing the coups in West Africa. Everybody's pushing now to say the independence time for Africa has come. And true independence, I'm talking about countries that were putting their deposits in the French central banks and had to ask them uh, to allow them to spend their own money in their own country, yet it's their resource. People are tired. I tell you the truth, even in the church, if all we do is just come and give you deep, deep, deep revelations, but you have no food at home, your children are no longer coming to church, there will be no relevance. There's a hunger and people are rising for this hunger to be filled. So for the sake of doing what God has called us to do, we must be able to um, understand the patterns and the pictures that God has given to us. And so for what Jesus went through with the cross, which was a very strategic military operation that shocked the devil <laughs> and how God checkmated the devil through the cross, we must now come into a place. We start to say, what is our responsibility in 2023? At the age I'm at, how much more time, God, have you given me to bring impact to my generation? What is the thing I'm supposed to do? I'm basically saying, in all humility, let there be a sensitivity and awareness that goes beyond our rents and our selfish needs and understand that there's a community that's counting on us to rise. There is a special place that God has for those that interpret times and seasons and know that there's something we're supposed to do. So Joseph could not fulfill his dream in his father's house. People say Joseph was sold into slavery. I say Joseph was sold into civilization. I have about five minutes left, so let me use them wisely. So we're building. The other day I was launching something a year ago, but the Central Bank of Kenya told me you need to hold on and get a license. It was very tough. I had operational costs. I had people that were waiting on me. And then we find ourselves at this place where this year, by God's grace, we got our license and we are now doing zero interest credit to the market. We launched just about, you know, uh, four or five weeks ago, over two, 300,000 people already getting involved. We estimate we'll be at 5 million users by December. Why is God giving us the skill and wisdom to infiltrate financial systems? Because you cannot give people interest at ridiculous amounts and 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 expect there to be um, um, a breakthrough for the for the for Christendom. We must come up and have people that are looking at fiscal policies, people that are looking at economic dilemmas, people that are looking at ecosystems because our greatest survival is going to be that God will enable us to have ecosystems. Israel is an ecosystem. Jews work through ecosystems. Muslims work through ecosystems. Hindus who are not in India mostly work through ecosystems. We have to become wiser on how we are positioning ourselves for growth, for posterity, for preservation, for long life that God wants to give us because you can live a long life, but a very depressed one. So he says, with long life, you will satisfy me. But what is the quality of that life? God has given you skill, understanding, wisdom, knowledge to be able to work through the understanding of the seasons he's given us because we are not in, we're not at war. We're not having tribal clashes on a daily basis. I do agree we have our problems, but we have to now start thinking differently. So we have to, look at things in a whole new way. And God wants us to understand that he has given us that knowledge so that grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and of his son, that we study and understand and implement that any innovation I come up with, I say, God, is this your innovation for this time? The people that gave me the funding for my housing is an Indian family. They're not saved. So God must give you strategy to understand that the capital might not be with the believers right now. So what do you put on? I don't think I have, um, I don't think I have enough time to show you, but there's a strategy I call collaborative and not combative because every Christian has been taught through our uh, period that we need to be very combative with who we consider enemies, you know, but 
God is putting Joseph's in Egypt so that you can learn systems and infrastructure. He is putting Daniel's with Nebuchadnezzar's so that you can learn. Joseph was not sold into slavery. He was sold into civilization because the dream God had given him needed a system. It couldn't have worked without infrastructure. It couldn't have worked without proper administrative processes. So God borrowed the administrative process of Egypt, depleted it, raised his own system from within, but it was a system that could work. The vision could not work with Simeon and Reuben getting jealous about Joseph's dreams. So ladies and gentlemen, if God has brought Africa into a time such as this, you know, in America and teaching and speaking there, and I was telling them, you know, I'm one of those preachers who's not looking for pulpits to speak at. I'm not trying to travel here to speak to all of you. I know evangelism must happen, but I have so much to do at home. I'm building. So any week I'm away from home is completely, um, I feel pain because I'm like, I'm losing days for the people God has given me. I'm losing days for the community. And I want to give the world the blueprint of these things that God is giving us. So I don't have much time with you tonight, but what I'll say to you is, this has been inspired for 18, 19 years. And I thank God for all the visionaries. But now our faith must be seen. There must be evidence. Faith is the substance. It's the, it's the substance, it's the evidence of things not seen. So we must now bring faith to work for the things we have spoken for years so that those who are supposed to do what they're supposed to do can occupy until he comes. It's not materialistic. I think that, that the fight I hear from certain theological circles is that we are moving into domin dominology. Uh, we're moving into materialism. Our members don't have food. Marriages are breaking up because of financial repression. Times are hard. Taxes are heavy. We can't put our heads in the sand and pretend nothing is going on in society. Solutions have to come from kingdom champions. And kingdom champions have a responsibility, just like Joseph, to bring restoration to an entire nation. God is calling us out of our single family unit occupation thought process to community ecosystem understanding so that we can be able to change even education. Otherwise, people are going to say they'll give you money, but you have to teach your children how to be gay. I was being told in Washington when I was in the U.S. just last week, I was being told that a law has been passed in Washington. As a parent, if your child starts to tell you at the age of six or seven that they feel like a cat, because they are allowed to feel whatever they're supposed to feel like, you're not supposed to correct them. That apparently if you collect them, child protective services can come and take that child from you because you're blocking the child from becoming whatever they want to become. That is nonsense, utter, total nonsense. So we must protect our community by bringing the education that matters. Who's gonna build the right schools? Schools are a responsibility of the church. You check the Catholic and Anglican church from the time education was a key important part of community. Healthcare was an important part of community. Housing was an important part of community. The Protestant church has got to arise and we stop protesting ourselves to death and say now we need to become organized and we need to bring our prayer life into the place of now practicing what God has called us to practice. May God bless you and keep you. I am looking forward to just seeing what God is doing across the entire Inspire community and to see that we come into a place where together we can begin to hear more of what solution are we bringing to our community. There has to be a heart for more than just me and my family. God bless you all. The world is sinking, but Africa is rising. It's time for Africa to turn the tide of political conflict, economic uncertainty, and moral decadence. The time is now for Africa to arise and rebuild. Inspire E-Conference 2023 will give you the tools and strategies to be part of Africa's rebuild. Join us online this August from Monday the 7th to Saturday the 12th from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. East African time as we gather the brightest minds across the continent to discuss the rebuilding of Africa. 
Book your slot today and be part of the movement that will change Africa forever. Africa, arise and build.